that they know where they're at. Well, and I'm going to be very honest with you, Lori. Um, everybody I've talked to in this case up until Vesta yesterday and now you has been very firmly on Team Sandy. Um, like you said, she is she's a very good liar. Um, the, everybody I've talked to, she has gotten to believe what she's telling you know them like inherently 100% the truth. I don't believe the damn thing she says. Um, and I, I'm like you. I'm, a, you know, I'm an investigator myself, and I know there's two sides to every story. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I've never been able to talk with Sam ever. Uh, I've talked with David quite a bit, obviously, because he's looking for his daughters. But I don't know. You know, obviously, his, he's got one side of a story too, and the truth is somewhere in the middle. Oh. Yeah, that's been the tough part, of course, is you know, since finding the girls. Um, they're, you know, we have to approach them very carefully because, of course, part of the reason they're so upset is they feel that they were never really listened to in the first place. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think, you know, depending on how some things went when they were dealing with the court system at the beginning, I mean, it probably seemed like it wasn't necessarily their opinion that mattered, um, mm -hmm. regardless of what they said. Uh, and unfortunately for me, when I look at this case, it just looks like the worst divorce on the planet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm trying to figure it all out and go from there and figure out what's accurate and what's not because the allegations are, you know, wildly different on both sides. Yeah. So that's the fun part for me. All right. Date is 11-18-2015. Time is 14.30 hours. Location is 20916 140th Street. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, in Herman, Minnesota, which yes. is actually Grant County, Minnesota, is that correct? Yes. And I'm speaking with Doug Dolan. Doug, can you state your full name and date of birth for me? Douglas C. Dolan, 918-62. Does the C stand for anything? Craig. Craig? Okay. And you live here at this house, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, you have a business here, you have your auto shop, you're also your house, and you, got, and you and your wife, is it Gina? Yes. Also run a ranch, is that correct? Yes. We do a youth ranch. A youth ranch. Okay. The uh, reason we came here today was we were investigating uh, two missing persons, uh, Samantha and Gianna Ruckey. Um, we came to your house earlier today, is that correct? Yes. Uh, myself, also uh, Inspector Matt Moran from the U.S. Marshal Service, as well as uh, a couple officers from the Grant County Sheriff's Office. Correct. Okay. Um, we uh, spoke with you earlier, told you why we were here. You told us that Samantha and Gianna were here, that's correct? Yes. Okay. Is that Sam? Yes. Okay. Uh, just for the record statement, I'm going to say that's a, a photo of Sandra Grazini Rucky. Um, so when Sam brought the girls here, what did she tell you as far as why they needed a place to stay? She said that uh, they were in the middle of a really bad divorce and she feared for the children's life and she needed a place for them to stay until things had calmed down or Hello? Hey, did you get my message? Can you come home? The, the uh, uh, police are here and uh, they're talking about uh, the, what they're going to do with the girls, whether they can stay here until they get this sorted out or whether they have to go stay somewhere else or what. But they, they, uh, the mom's in jail. And they're saying that if the girls go in and take care of this, that they can get their mother out of jail and uh, hopefully get this straightened out. As of now, I don't think that uh, uh, they really know what they're going to do with them, but they want to get a statement from you and the mom dropping them off. And, and uh, how long did you know exactly when they were here, when they came? I know it was on a Sunday because we were going to church and we were praying about it. Well, you can just t you can just tell them that in your because they need to get a statement from you. I wasn't sure when it was. He's asking me if it was spring or summer. I couldn't even tell him that. So, but come home so you can get this so we can get this straightened out. The girls are doing good. So, 
they've got a female officer here talking to them, and they seem like they're okay. And at first they were at first they were really uptight, but they seem like they're doing good now. So. I'll see you when you get here. Bye. She's on her way. Okay. Um, so going back to, to when Sam uh, brought the girls here, she called you before she got here. Oh, sure. I, like I said, I, don't get me wrong. I, I've been working on this case for a while. Uh, I know exactly how contentious this whole process was on both sides. It was not simple. This has got to be one of the nastiest divorce cases I've ever seen, one of the worst this is basically, this is a, everything went wrong that could go wrong on this one, I think, I unfortunately. One of the things you mentioned earlier that I want to ask you about is that you said when the girls first got here, they were, they were afraid. Beyond afraid. They, okay. they were terrified. I've never seen a kid so scared. I can't emphasize that to you. I've seen kids in really rough shape. I've never seen one that was truly afraid for their life until okay. I saw them. Okay. Did they ever tell you why they were afraid? No. They would just, uh, one time I went in and Sammy was curled up in the bathroom in a fetal position, sobbing uncontrollably. Okay. Did she ever talk about anything that happened at home? Just how terrible it was. She never gave much for details. It was, you know, that's why I always preached unfor unforgiveness. And, and no matter what happens, you've got to try to overcome it so it doesn't tear you up. Okay. And I, I assume that's why she had the problems with men hugging her because, you know, we have a lot of friends come over and a lot of people are good friends with them, but she does not like being touched by a man. Okay. Um, but she's never gone into any sort of specifics of any incident that happened or anything no. like that? And I asked her, was there an, a, a sexual abuse thing or anything like that? And she just said no, and that was it. So. Okay. Um, how about Gianna? Gianna is actually, she's my little spirit queen. She's really a religious, strong, spirited woman. But she's, she's the first one that, uh, that buttons up. She doesn't want to talk about nothing. Sammy would actually talk more than Gianna would about stuff, about feelings and stuff. Gianna just doesn't want okay. to talk about it. And so far as you know, I mean, when, uh, let me ask you this too. When, when, when Sam brought him here, did she ever tell you, uh, it, it, you know, did, I'm assuming you you thought she had custody of the girls. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You know, she as her as a parent uh, had a right to ask you to watch her kids. Yeah, I yeah, and I I just assumed that uh, um, it, a lot of times it's as much financial. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought she was in financial trouble too. You know, I, it wasn't. I didn't really see this terror in the girls until afterwards. Okay. They were really closed up at first and. You know, they just kind of sat there and didn't do anything. And, and that was after? You know, like for the first day or two. Okay. And then I started to, you know, just because you're around them, they started to see them around. Okay, so they started to open up a little bit mm -hmm. as time went on. And, but they've never really talked a whole lot about home at all. No. I she would have came in the house. I'm going to tell you how we ended up here today. Okay. I mean, like I said, I told you before, I've been working on this case for a year and a half since I became a detective. I caught up when it was cold. It was already it'd been a year since the girls had left home. Um, and at the start, we didn't really know where to go, didn't know where to turn. Um, Sam did a lot of things to keep us from being able to contact her. Okay, um, She didn't have phone numbers that, would, that we had that would work. Uh, she didn't really have a permanent address. Uh, I told you before, she's a flight attendant, so she's kind of fly, you know, she's all over the country, all over the world. Actually. I knew that. The girls um, had said that she was a flight attendant. Yeah, so it's, it was, we couldn't get a hold of her. And couldn't. the girls had said their dad was a trucker. And he, uh, he works, or he owns a trucking company. Um, but that made it very difficult for us to even try and get in contact with her, and it wasn't working very well. Um, so why did she leave? Why did who leave? Sam. Well... The divorce did not go very well um, as far as going through all the proceedings, okay? And trying to be straight up honest with you from what I can tell, from what I can see, there was a lot of things the judge asked her to do that she didn't do, she refused to do. Um, and like I said, this is from what I can see from the proceedings of that, of that court. What could the judge ask you to do that would make you flee? Um, Here's the part I, that's the part I'm trying, I don't quite get, okay? Um, no, and this is, this is the part where I also think there was perhaps some poor information, some poor advice that went to Sam, okay? Um, 
Well, you said you've said you've gone through a divorce. Your divorce has been extremely bad. That's how I know well. DDM. And that's how you. That's how you because you contacted her. It wouldn't her. surprise me if that's how she got our number. Okay. Um, I don't know, but could be. Okay. Um, with with kids, and there was a custody issue. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you this divorce started in the spring of 2011. Okay, so two years before the girl showed up here is when this divorce started. Um, Dad had moved out. He wasn't living at home. Um, he was living somewhere else at the time. It was just mom with the kids at home. Um, there was fears that mom was saying things and doing things to make the kids not want to like Dad, not want to be with Dad. Um, and what had ended up happening is the judge ordered that the kids be put into a guardianship situation until he could figure out which parent should have custody of the children. Mm -hmm. um, and court-appointed psychologists got involved, as well as a guardian of item, so on and so forth. Which are, what originally happened is the girls were put into, I shouldn't say the girls, all the kids, were put into guardianship with, um, at first it was dad's sister. That didn't go very well. What ended up happening is the new guardian became mom's sister. So she was watching the kids from September of 2012 into April of 2013. Um, mom's sister decided she didn't want to be and involved. And the parents were still there in the scene? Or she no, fled that, was, that was the problem. Mom had to move out of the house. So she, I think, was living with a friend. Dad was out of the house already. He'd been out of the house for probably a year by that point in time. And actually what happened was the kids ended up living with mom's sister for a while. And I don't think anybody was living in the house. I don't get that. Why wouldn't one of the parents have them? Uh, because the, the fear was, was that mom was making the kids not like dad. And there was already issues where the, where the kids were saying they didn't want to be with dad, or at least the girls were saying they didn't want to be with dad, so on and so forth. That's, not, that's the problem, is that um, there, there's something called, and I don't know if, this, if you want to call this a legitimate psycholo you know, psychological diagnosis or not, but it's called parental alienation syndrome. Um, and I heard that when I was going through my divorce. My yeah. wife was saying all kinds of stuff about me. And right. Even and said I raped her and beat her and got a restraining order and I had to go to court to get it removed. Right. So basically what happened was dad was basically saying he was afraid that mom was making the kids not like him by saying things bad about him, alleging things that he did poorly, did wrong, so on and so forth. And so the judge took the kids away from that? So the judge basically decided that I don't know which one of you should be the custodial parent, I don't know how I'm going to figure this out, but I want a court-appointed psychologist to get involved, talk to the kids, talk to the parents, and figure out who are the kids better off with, or how should I do this, how should I do this custody, should it be 50-50, should one of the parents have custody, should the other have custody, I don't know. Okay, and like I said, I wasn't involved in this, this is back when this was all in family court. Um, so the court appointed a psychologist and guardian ad litems to try and manage the kids' welfare as best they could. Um, and, and help assist the judge in figuring out how this should all be figured out. One of the things that some of the judges do during this is they will have parents go through, they'll have them do stuff like supervised parenting time, where a psychologist will watch you with your kids and see how you, how you are with your kids and so on and so forth. And but how did that go when they did that? Well, from what I understand, I don't know how many of those that Sam did if it was only a couple or not very many, but apparently they had problems having her. She didn't fulfill everything the court asked her to do was part of the problem. There was also, I think, probably psychological evaluations and some other things that needed to be done or that the judge ordered. And here's the thing, as you know, how family court can go. So I, had to go to, I had to go do the anger management thing. At, yeah, anger they had my own pocket yeah. to prove that I yeah. wasn't And that's the other crazy. problem, too, is you also know it's a very expensive process mm -hmm. to go through all this stuff. I Supervised visitation, they charge you for that. Yeah, I had to you, all these things add up. It all adds up. Um, but that, this is all the stuff the judge ordered to try and figure out who should the kids be with. So while they're going through this process of who should the kids be with, the kids weren't with either one of their parents. They were with a relative. Um, in oh. April, what had happened was the mom's sister said she didn't want to do it anymore. She couldn't do it anymore for personal reasons. She asked the judge, I can't do this. Somebody else has to be the guardian. So the judge ordered dad's sister to be the guardian. The girls got home that night after being told what had happened, and they ran away. Um, they weren't happy about it. They liked 
mom's sister. They want to live with mom. They've made it very clear that they wanted to be with mom. They told the judge they wanted to be with mom. As far as why that wasn't taken into account, I don't know. I'm not the mm -hmm. judge on that. I don't know anything. It could be because a lot of the stuff that mom asked or the judge asked mom to do didn't get done, and he didn't feel he could make that kind of ruling until it was. I don't know. Um, like I said, this, this divorce proceeding has asked to be one of the messiest, longest, oh man, most protracted, drawn out processes. Getting jumped around from house to house and going through all that crap at the same time. Right. So no it's, wonder they're screwed up. So it's, it's not. I understand there are other kids. I know a lot about her case. I do honestly believe the judge, Judge Knutson, is psychotic. That I have no doubt. I've been in his courtroom. Mm. The guy is absolutely crazy. I mean, I believe that there needs to be a lot of changes in family court as well. Yeah.